Welcome to Spirit Grooves. I am Michael Earlywine, and I'm going to be your host. What is presented here is most appropriately part of what we would call shamanic astrology, in that it has to do with life initiation and tales of the soul's journey through time. This approach is not meant to be dogmatic, but like all astrological techniques, this is but one of many to better understand our life and life's journey. So please accept it in that tone. We will now look briefly at the planets that exist beyond the realm of Saturn or time. These external planets are beyond the physical or material on the outer or far side of Saturn, just as the inner planets are beyond the physical on the inside or within Saturn's orbit. These outer planets are Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, and the three together have been called the following, which are worth thinking about a bit. Out of the body planets, transcendental planets, metaphysical planets, after death planets, planets of the unconscious, spiritual planets, the impersonal planets, the psychic planets, and other names. Why these names? What are these outer planets all about? That's what we're going to, going to take a look at. We could push the limits of language and say that the outer planets are not about anything, not about any, quote, thing, unquote, for they are, by definition, somehow beyond the physical, yet they have a very important message for us. I will briefly try to present here an overview of the outer planets and how they might be used in counseling. One reason to include them is that these outer planets represent in yet another way the same life initiations or rites of passage that we have looked at elsewhere in this series. Initiations as seen in the planets or chakras within the sphere of Saturn. These outer planets are the eternal witness and awareness of all that is, as in Revelation. In other words, these trans-Saturnian planets serve to reveal and emphasize the nature of the inner planets, and this will require some, some explanation. From the point of view of shamanic astrology, the outer or transcendental planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, as well as any trans-Plutonian planets yet to be discovered, are not stations or experience beyond our physical life in the sense of some next place to get to or to land. These outer planets are not physical in the sense that Saturn is physical. For Saturn, remember, is physicality or form itself. The outer planets are, by definition, beyond Saturn and therefore formless or metaphysical. Because these outer planets are beyond form or Saturn, they are and can only be part of the revelation of the physical, of the internal planets that we've already looked at, at the planets within and including Saturn. These outer planets can but reveal, reveal the nature and importance of the inner planets. This is the extent of their power, but uh, as we shall see, this is power indeed. It's important here to grasp that Saturn itself, the planet Saturn, is the realm of form and time. It's the planet of all physicality, similar to the form of our body that contains all the organs. And in this case, all the planets within Saturn
including our great sun, which of course is not a planet. But the point is that Saturn is this physicality and form. Just, just as we know that Mars has to do with drive and ambition, energy, and Jupiter with direction and life path, so Saturn has always been the planet of form and the physical itself. It's not enough to simply nod your head that you understand this concept and then move on. If it does not deeply register, then what follows here is not going to make much sense to you. The fact that the outer planets are not physical, are not physical places or stages. In the context of shamanic astrology, these outer planets are beyond form, beyond the physical, thus they're called metaphysical. They are the measure of the physical, the sensing of the physical. Think about that. Astrology is just a language. We're not talking about putting a space probe on Pluto, sampling the soil, but instead here we are using astrology to point to the esoteric meanings of the planets. In this case, the outer planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Astrology is only a language that we use to point to something happening in our lives and not itself much of an end. Shamanic astrology does not have to correspond exactly to other forms of astrology, especially to science. There are many astrological languages, and the point is to make them speak or articulate themselves, make them speak to us. Saturn is the physical end, and Saturn marks the form and the physical end of things. It always has throughout the long history of astrology, both east and west. That physical form contains within itself the great sun and all of the planets out to Jupiter. Beyond Saturn, beyond form itself, we have the outer planets, which are, by the above definition, formless and non-physical. What can they mean or point to? What's, what is their use? I've mentioned elsewhere that each of us is born and grows our personal physical body over time. And in time, every, every body is mature and complete physically when Saturn returns at 29.4 years of age. There, there is no more physical growth from that time forward, unless you want to include middle age spread, but, but that's not what we mean here by growth. The physical body is all done growing by the time Saturn returns at 30. It has reached its physical peak and is mature. It's that that we are speaking of here. At that time, the physical body is not going to get any better. There will be no more. Let's talk about the prime of life. Beyond maturity, or what we call the prime of life, it's downhill for everybody, for every body. There's not like a higher peak of physical prowess to be obtained. It's kind of like the, the tra trajectory of a missile. Our body, if exercised and cared for, will reach a peak, maintain its form for a while, and then eventually begin to fall and to fail. We all know this is true, and it's true for everybody, human or otherwise. Therefore, the planets beyond Saturn, beyond the physical, will not bring us any more physicality, any more form. If we are looking for more of that, then the outer planets can only testify or prove to us that there is no more increase of form to be expected. 
by the same definition, we can say that these outer planets can reveal this fact as a natural byproduct of getting to know them by using them as an oracle. And in this regard, the outer planets are indeed very oracular. Astrology, remember, at heart is an oracle, albeit a complex one. In other words, it speaks to us. If we are used during the first 30 year cycle of Saturn to something always being added on in the form realm, to there always being something new, then we will not find, physically speaking, any more new as we move beyond the 30 year Saturn cycle and as we begin to pick up on the cycles of the outer planets. I have a concept I like called straight lines curve. If we've been caught up in the exposition of Saturn as it makes its first cycle after our birth, which ends at 29.4 years heliocentrically, we may have become used to thinking of time as a line, linear, time as a straight line or a linear journey that we've been on. This is a common and a quite natural mistake that most of us make. When Saturn completes its return at about 30 years of age, and when it turns to repeating itself, that means going over the same degrees of the zodiac for, for a second time, that linear sense that we might have of going in a straight line somewhere starts to fade in our minds and the idea of a circle slowly begins to dawn for us. The straighter the line, the finer the curve. Before and through the Saturn return, most of us are used to conceiving our life along a timeline, you know, in a linear format. Time in this view stretches on into the future with birth at one end you know, and death at the other. This is the common view, a timeline from birth to death. But with the Saturn return, this linear sense of time begins to be challenged by the essential circularity, the cycles of life itself, the tendency for all things to repeat or to cycle. This is for most of us what could only be called a major initiation and it's also a source of confusion to many. I'm not suggesting here that this is a sudden realization. For most, it, it's not. In fact, this altered sense of time as a cycle or a circle is very, very gradual for most. And apparently non-existent for some. I mean, they just don't get it. The ingrained time sense of time as a straight line. This theory is slow to give way to the rea reality of time as returns, of time as returning, being cyclic. Yet beyond the 30 year Saturn return, time stops as we have come to know it up to that point. And time begins to repeat itself and to go over the same ground in the zodiac, the same degrees of the zodiac, for the second time around. This is what we might term a climacteric event, and it's one with far-reaching implications, one that we should study, and actually we should study in a section by itself, but here we will just touch on the main articulation points, and we'll have to go into more detail in another program. Let's talk about the physical end of life. At our Saturn return, at 30 years of age, we as a thing, we as a body are complete. And we, that is our body, is launched beyond time itself for the first time. Time as we've come to know it up to that point literally just stops. And this is a really important point. Let's take a quick review of what this kind of time suggests. Up to when we're 30 years of age, up to this point, 
throughout our life, Saturn or form has been positing or declaring itself in the zodiac degree by zodiac degree. Over the course of our formative years, the activities of the inner planets, which complete their initial circle or cycle around the sun, one by one have caught our attention, each in their turn. But after our Jupiter return falls to repeating itself around 12 years of age, that's when we can perhaps just begin to pick up on Saturn's story. And with the second Jupiter return around 24 years of age, this marks a real turning point as far as tuning in to what Saturn is, has been, laying down all this time. We could mark these first 30 years as the track or line of time, as mentioned earlier. This almost unavoidable sense of linearity that we all pick up on as kids. That is, you know, time stretching seemingly endless, endlessly toward the future. But it's a bewildering display that time shows us. So keep in mind that all during our first 30 years, Saturn is developing or positing the physical form, the physical experience that we have up to that point. It's all that we have known, and it is captivating. It would seem that each of us is fascinated, if not entranced, by the seeming endless, often bewildering display of form and new experience that Saturn lays out. As I pointed out, there is a quite natural assumption that this stream of new experience will go on forever, and that this is just the nature of life. Like the proverbial deer in the headlights, we are caught up in, this, in the bewildering display of time. When time stops, it's my contention here, in the esoteric sense, that time literally stops as Saturn reaches its first return at 30 years of age and turns to repeating itself and begins going over a section of the zodiac for a second time. And this is not an aha experience for us. Most don't get it all at once, and some never seem to get it at all. Instead, as Saturn falls to repetition in our experience at 30, that sense of something new as always appearing at the present point of our timeline begins to fade. It gradually falls away. There's nothing further physically that's going to be forthcoming, just like our body is not going to grow anymore. There is no more, more. You've got it. This is it. And there, this is where a great silence can set in. For most people, this is not so easy to recognize, but somehow intuited. We feel different. Something has changed, but we don't know what it is just yet. Some part of our deeper consciousness is monitoring all of this, and it senses a gap or change in the experience, but we can't quite put our finger on it. In Western esoteric tradition, this great change, this rite of passage, has been referred to as, quote, entering the silence, end quote, because the great motor of time has been turned off for the first time. The rush and the roar of time that has been with us all our life gradually fades to silence. My esoteric teacher, who was a traveling initiator in a Rosicrucian order, had his own way of explaining this concept and I'll pass it on to you, since I found it totally helpful myself. He spoke of this whole first Saturn return transition like the launching of a rocket from Earth into outer space. Our time within the Saturn cycle, until we reach its return at roughly 30 years of age, 
that's the time during which we can work on and build our own personal space capsule. At, at, the, at that time, we're still grounded, so to speak, and we have all the tools and resources we might need to construct as perfect a vehicle as we can manage. However, at the Saturn return, 29.4 years heliocentrically, that vehicle is launched, ready or not, well-built or not so well-built. Literally, there is no more time after that to work on the vehicle. The physical growth, the physical development for each of us has reached an end. For better or for worse, our vehicle is finished, our body is done, and it's launched as we enter the space beyond Saturn, beyond time, what we could call here outer space, the space outside what we had been up to that point enclosed within. This is a major initiation. Our journey beyond the realm of time, beyond Saturn, to a very to a very great degree depends on our vehicle, how it was constructed, how well it was made, and so on. Because we are literally floating out there beyond time, floating in the space beyond time, if that phrase makes any sense. If you are older than 30 years of age, you are already out there beyond time. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. If you would like to read more, I have an ebook called Astrology of the Heart on this same topic, plus many other free ebooks that I've written. Just go to astrologyland.com and look for the book link in the middle of the page. See you next time.